Hello ladies and gentlemen, uh, this next screencast about the Active Inspire software will focus on what the software calls their browsers. Now basically what the browser is all about, it provides us the opportunity to see, have different sub-menus within um, the software to do different types of things with the pages, with the resources, certain objects, notes, properties, actions, and voting. And all this is outlined within within the tutorial. Basically here's how this works. Um, and right now I have my browsers activated and you can tell because as I take my cursor and roll it over the left hand side of my screen you can see the page browser menu pop up now if your browser is not there if that op our options not there for you you need to make sure you go up click on view and then make sure that the browsers um, option is checked once it's checked then you'll know that you have the options for uh, for viewing this browser um, and the very first thing the default browser as I roll over this is the page browser basically what this lets me do is this lets me view all the pages that I've created within my active inspired document now let's say you can't see all of them in a two column format they're down here at the bottom of that uh, the browser you have the option to uh, as I move the cursor up, I now have the option to, to minimize the thumbnails, um, and that per obviously provides more rows and columns for me. As I move the cursor down, the thumbnails become larger, and then the, that means that there are going to be less rows and columns. So it's completely up to you what view you like. But this is a nice way to navigate. Um, since I have like a 47-page document right now, I don't want to hit the right button 47 times to get from page 1 to page 47. So I can just scroll down here, and then I can click on... Um, you know another page if I want to get there so I'm from page 27 to 37 in one click so that would be um you know that would be a nice luxury to utilize within that now at the top let's say you want to look at some resources from the resource um, from the resource browser I'm gonna click on the next icon right next to page browser up here at the top it says resource browser um, within this this is where I can go through and look at my resource library all the backgrounds that I have available for me to to drop onto my screen um, there might again this is going to be completely your leisure to check out there's some nice grids here of graph paper for math teachers um, there's maybe some re resource packs that you downloaded that I talked about um, within the tutorial as well. Um, here's an algebra resource pack that I downloaded. So again, um, that's the way to get to um, all the resources. Basically like the, um, the juiced up um, clip art from Microsoft. Um, next to that, the next resource browser is called, or the next browser is called the object browser. This is pretty much for um, it's not a necessity to be able to be comfortable with this browser. It pretty much just talks about the different layers within the document, within the page, and what layer each object's on. Pretty much for the most of us, not that important. The next one is called Notes Browser. It looks like a, green, or a yellow notepad. When I click on that, basically what that gives me is it gives me the option to add some notes to this page. Um, so let's just say I type in the word hello, um, hello kids. Remember to ask about I don't know, the homework tonight. So I can type that in real fast. And what that will do now is as soon as I click out of this, you can see in the top corner, right hand corner of my page, I have a little note that popped up that tells me that there's something I want to make sure I tell people. So when I click on that, automatically the notes browser opens up. Kind of a nice thing to be able to work with. So that's the notes browser. Um, the next one is the property browser. When I click on that, as soon as it goes there you go again it's more high-end if you're not overly comfortable with the software I would not even worry about it it pretty much just allows you to define certain properties for certain items on your page the next one actions again a little more high-end it allows you some some different and pretty cool um, functionality as far as dragging certain things to your screen so that when you click this button on the screen one time an action will pop up again not that important um, then the last one is the voting browser. This is the browser we'll use once we get um, all of our active expression and active votes set up. Those would be the personal response systems, the clickers, if you will, um, that we have for the students. So that's pretty much what the browser allows us to do right now for everyone's intents and purposes. Probably the most important ones will be the first one, the page browser. Um, that will allow us to, again, view all of the pages we've created in one uh, nice space 
and uh, the second one, which is the resource browser, which is basically our uh, our clip art, um, our juiced up clip art, as far as dropping uh, things onto our screen that's within the library that's already been created for us or that we add to. So again, if you cannot, if you don't see the browser menu right away, click View in the main toolbar and uh, click on browsers. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, please don't hesitate to. Uh, to ask me about the browsers if you're not comfortable with them I'd be more than happy to help you out take care